This is Dave Meltzer, CEO of Sports One Marketing with Entrepreneur The Playbook. And we are here at one of our favorite places, Hooters, live at the Masters. And I'm sure we're both in about the same mental state because it is early in the morning at the Masters. And if anybody knows Dave Meltzer and John Daly, this is a good time of the day for both of us. Yeah, it's the only time we get to chill out, I think, a little yeah. bit, you know. It's nice because this place turns into an incredible shit show. It's it, it's <laughs> it's a great it's a great show. I mean, it's uh, I'm, I'm guessing 25, maybe 35,000 people come through here a day uh, during the Masters week, maybe more with Tiger playing. But uh, I just Hooters is like a family to me. And, you know, we've we've done this since 1997 when I played the Masters, wow. and I do it when I don't. So it's kind of a tradition now and. Uh, you just can't beat it. Now, most people know you're a great golfer and a great driver, but what they maybe don't know is how entrepreneurial you are and all the different businesses you have. And so I'm gonna start with one of my favorite businesses. Uh, you know, in Warm Moon's my partner, we do a party in Cabo and we buy you out of Loudmouth gear. <laughs> Tell me the inspiration behind Loudmouth. Well, Larry Jackson came to my bus in, I think it was January or February of 2008. And, um, said, hey, you want to wear some crazy loudmouth stuff? I said, I'll try it, you know? Um, and I, my first tournament I, I played with it was in Spain, over in uh, you know Europe, and people were looking at me funny, and next thing I know, it got on TV, and everybody, it just, it just boosted. I mean, everybody couldn't believe that I was, somebody was wearing something like that, and uh, the company just went skyrocket. Um, they went from an $800,000 company to about a $2.6, $3 million company in the first year. And then wow. um, it's been boosted up there. We got the Major League Baseball teams now. And I got my beloved Cowboys. Dad gives me, gives me some room in his shops in the stadium. And, uh, but it's really, and what really helped us in Lamont was the colleges, getting the college to be able to put their logos on there. It's kind of changed a little bit here and there, uh, but um, no, it's been a, it's been a wonderful ride with Loudmouth. It's it's um, a company. It is the most fun you can have with your pants on. But um, <laughs> we uh, we've had a great run. We've had a great time, and uh, to be able to do what we've done because apparel business has been tough for quite a while. And yeah. um, but we're moving strong, and it's been going great. It's fun stuff. Now it's interesting because you know I teach a lot of people about illumination, and I always try to tell them, look, when you're yourself, I call it your own frequency and you brand that, you actually can turn what other people may consider a negative into a positive. Right? Your lifestyle is what I consider more normal than most, although I believe most celebrities that I'm with and athletes are hypocrites. Right? It's like, oh, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't stay out late at night. Right? And, and meanwhile, we're until all Until they human. get caught, right? Right, until they get caught. Right? And with cell phones, they're getting caught more and more because they're all over. You took the opposite and I think more profitable approach. You said, this is John Daly. Right, and everything that you did, you branded. Uh, long drive, drinking, gambling, weight, whatever it was, you branded and made it a positive. And I think, like everybody else, that's why they love you because it's like, hey, this guy's real. W what age did you kind of figure out that you know what? I'm just going to be me, and I'm not this uptight, preppy golf kid because you started playing so young. When, when did you kind of make that realization? I think my mom, I mean, she always said, look, the more you tell the truth about things and the more you do things right or wrong, you just tell the truth about it, be honest with yourself. I mean, um, she taught me well in that aspect. When I screw up, I tell the world I screw up, but you know, I'm, I, didn't, I don't hide my cigarettes on the golf course. So if I want to have a drink in front of 50,000 people, I have a drink in front of 50,000 people, but um, it's just the way you know, in the South, in Arkansas, wherever in the South, you know, we kind of do things the way we do things. We don't hide anything. And um, I think that's helped me a lot. I think me and Anna being hands-on on all my businesses, ventures that I do, um, you know, it's more like if you take Tiger Woods, the TW logo with Nike, I mean, Tiger doesn't have to promote that. He doesn't, Nike does all that for him, of course. you know, but he doesn't. He doesn't really have to work at it. Like right. I work at my branding, so mine is more like the hundred percent give back because I'm doing it all. Me and Anna do it all on ourselves, and you know I'm sure like these other ventures like Jordan and Tiger and all these other brands. You know they're probably getting three percent, four percent, but um, you know like with the drink with Fusion out of Chicago. I mean um, that thing is taking off. Our new malt bre beverage, sweet tea lemonade vodka in a can, sixteen ounce. With the new Arnold Palmer. No, I, Arnold, 
I don't, you know, Arnold Palmer never put vodka in his. I guess they do now, but uh, he may have. He just didn't market it that way. Yeah, they didn't mark. He didn't market it that way. I'm sure he did. But, <laughs> no, trust me, he did. I've had a few with him. He's, nice. he's tasted mine and uh, a few times before he passed on. But uh, you know, they're doing a great job in fusion. We're we're um, we're in about I don't know 20,000, 27,000 C stores now with my drink. Um, it's getting bigger. We, I hopefully, love it. Hopefully, we're coming out with a Bloody Mary malt beverage in September. Um, skyrocketing you got the new thin cans that everybody's going to we'll be going to that pretty soon and and you make those decisions with Anna both yourself all the marketing branding distribution everything's hand on with you well Anna helps but with the drink it's me Brian and Christian my partners yep. and we deal everything with fusion and uh, the malt beverage right now is a big big deal it's it's really big right now it's um, where people can actually get a you know a decent drink at a very very minimal price you know let me ask you a question about you said, you know, the good things, the bad things. I believe the truth vibrates the fastest is what my mom taught me, right? So I always live by the same way. And, you know, I've screwed up many times. I lost millions of dollars and had to own up to it and all of those types of things that we both have had in our lives. But do you think, you know, when we talk about drinking and cigarettes, like, I don't believe it's good or bad. You know, I really don't. I think, you know, excessive use and abuse of anything is bad, and that's including golf. Yeah. Right. It, like I, I don't want my eight-year-old son playing golf every single minute of the day, you know, and I don't want him smoking every single minute of the day or drinking every single minute of the day. So, where, where does that fall into your brand? With you know, because you represent all these cool things, and you know, an alcoholic beverage to me is fine, but other people, you know, when I put up something about Dennis Rodman, I got hammered on the internet. Right? Like, how can you, you know, you talk about inspiring people and putting inspirational people. Well, Dennis Rodman is the world best at something. And you're the world's best. And now as an entrepreneur, you're proving, hey, you know, what I put on the course, I'm taking off because you're successful at all of these different things. Where does that fall into your philosophy? Well, I mean, you're exactly right. I mean, you know, everybody has something to offer in this world. God made us that way. I mean... Um, some of it's negative, some of it's positive, but, um, you know, I think to be successful in anything, you've got to fess up to the downfalls that you've had and the, and the mistakes that you make, because it makes it more satisfaction to be successful, work at it and do it. But you go back to like, yeah, I think golf to an, to an extreme for me, you know, I could sit and hit a hundred yard shots all day long, but my body won't let me hit five irons, 500 balls a day or 200 balls a day and get on the range or go out and play a lot because I'm just, my injuries are too bad. My shoulders are so bad and, uh, and all that. My ribs are fractured, so I can't really do much about that to be able to go out and do that. But um, like going to drink and the smoking and stuff, yeah, to a minimum, we all do that. But trust me, I ain't gonna lie. We all go overboard. There's yeah. no doubt about it. I mean, I think a lot of athletes go overboard working out. I mean, I think Tiger did. I think. Rory McIlroy to David an extent. Duvall, I think did. David did a little yeah. bit. Um, you know, I just worry about guys like Jason Day and all these guys that, you know, they look great, they're buff, but you know, be careful. I just because you know yeah. that can. I honestly think Tiger's back problems weren't from golf. I think they're from the heavy duty working out, and I don't I, care what he says, I, it was from working out. I believe that. I. It's interesting because we talk about obsessive behavior, and we're around a lot of the greats. And it, you kind of need to be obsessive to be the best at something, right? The world's best long driver, or whatever it is you got. I mean, because if you're not obsessive, you're not practicing enough. You don't have that consistent behavior. The problem is it carries over into the other things that we do, right? And, and I'm in the same personality trait, right? It could be gambling, drinking, yeah, well, There whatever. we go. That's, just, that's just problems I had. Exactly. Gambling, drinking, smoking. That. Yeah. How do you now apply that behavior that you know? Because you're an honest guy with yourself. You know you have that personality trait. How do you apply that to uh, your business and kind of trying to balance that and moving that energy to the business to be obsessive about your businesses? Well, I mean, I'm not obsessive about it. I, I, um, I work with a great team, like on the drink. I work with a great team at Loudmouth. I think me and Anna branding my John Daly logo, we're a very successful team in that. We do that on our own through our number one Hooters guy, our number one Hooters store is in Clearwater. The founders, Bed Drossy, we, our stuff's right there at the Provident Building, the headquarters of 27 stores they still own. And then you got the wonderful HOA, Hooters of America, and um, Dan Walker does most of the t-shirts. Where, where did the lion nickname come from? Uh, it was, um, 
Kicking field goals for Elias High School in uh, Missouri. Really? Um, a team had canceled on us. We had a good team. We were we went up ten and zero. I think we went eleven and one or twelve and one. Almost went to state. Um, we ended up playing a team called Rockbridge, and uh, my two field goals, we beat them. They were like three or four A's higher than yeah. we were, and we beat them on my two field goals, six nothing. And had blonde hair coming out of the helmet and. Got everybody at school just started calling me the Lion. Lion wins for Crusaders, two field goals or something like that, and um, just got started called the Lion. Well, it's a great, it's a great brand. Now, who has a better mullet, you, Gruden, or Mark Davis? Well, I, mine was longer, <laughs> yeah. So I gotta, I gotta say, I did. Well, I think yours was the most stylish. I, what you did, at least you combed the front of it. Like Mark Davis and Gruden, they just like, it's like a bull. <laughs> Um, all right, we did talk about your driver company. So, you, you know, we have the drink and alcoholic beverages company, you have Loudmouth, all doing really well, but you also have a driver. Well, it's Vertical Groove, it's not mine, they, I endorse it. Okay. It's, um, you know, I played it all last year and, and, and Ruben and all the guy, all our team at, at Vertical Groove um, said, you know, you hit 38% more fairways and I led the driving stat in, in the senior tour. Yeah. So I said, well, wow, I knew I hit it good, but I didn't think I hit it that good, you know. And but it's it, it literally the grooves are vertical, so you get less spin, less spin. You hit the ball straighter. It's about all you need to know, you know. People can go to vert v e r t golf dot com and, and look at it. You get a beautiful box. You get a name tag when you order the driver. It's and and you know it's all about the right shaft. You get the right shaft. It's going to be your best driver ever. How much do you think technology is playing in this? You know, you played golf for a long time. And you probably hit the ball just as far, you know, as a senior almost as you did when you were a kid because of technology, the ball and the clubs. How much do you think it's playing into the golf today in, as far as the pros go compared to your general mass player? Because they're different technologies. Um, you know, the golf ball, I think, has been the big deal. I think the golf ball just flies further. Technology and shafts and, and iron faces have gotten, I think, a little firmer than what they used to be. But for me, I mean, I'm... I'm not hitting it nowhere near when I was young. I mean, since no. 07 anyway. I mean, since really? my shoulder got separated and I fractured you know, the ribs. Right. I haven't been the same. I had to go from a draw to a cut. Um, so, I mean, technology, to be honest, has really not helped John Daly at all. It's actually hurt me. But the general public, you think the, the ball technology has really helped your average golfer? I think it's, it's, it's made golf funner. It's made golf easier for people to start. Um, for me, I think it's killed me because I'm not as great as I used to be as a short game artist. I was always a ballada guy. Yeah. You had to really work a ballada ball, and these balls, you can barely hardly ever cut them or draw them because they're so firm now. But yeah. I think Tylus is probably the only ball that I've played that really, as the new ball generations come around, I find it easier. I can work my Pro V1 a lot better than any other ball. Yeah. Um, Tylus is always the best. They always will be. They've just got the... Um, they just got the, they know what they're doing, you know what I mean, basically. What do you think golf has to do uh, to, to grow? I mean, you're, you're a great business mind, you've been in golf. If you, if you were the head of the PGA, what would you change to make golf great? Well, I won't talk about web.com or the PGA Tour, a little bit maybe the PGA Tour, but for the senior tour, yeah. we shouldn't be governed by any rules. Until, until we get world ranking points, then we should be able to govern our own body. We're entertainers. Um, if we hit a ball in the middle of the fairway we should be, and it's in a divot, we should be able to drop it. Who cares if we anchor? We've earned it. Yeah. Um, who cares if we have 20 clubs in our bag? We've earned it. Who cares if we're riding the cart? We've earned it. It's a time where we get to showcase our skills with a lot of fun. But unfortunately, we're, we're governed by these rules that um, when we have no status in the game. Right. You know, we're on TV and Charles Schwab's done an unbelievable job for us and our sponsors are great. but. We have no status compared to the other tours. Right. We're not getting world ranking points. So then why are we governing, why don't we govern our own body and have some fun, you know? Wear shorts on the practice rounds and the pro-ams like the PGA does. Yeah. And, um, but you know, until we get world ranking points where it means something, you know, the Charles Schwab to win is great, but you know, web.com's getting world ranking points, senior tours should get something. If we're gonna be governed by their rules, you know, then we should, we should be on the world rankings. If we're not, then let us go out and have as many clubs as we want. Ride in the car and have some fun. I agree. Uh, last, last point. 
you have a, uh, your own charity, Mother's Day, you have a huge golf tournament, you have all types of celebrities, entertainers, you're a great country music singer yourself, I think two albums out. No, I'm not that good. Yeah, it's well, hobby. I like it. I've, I've seen the videos. I like it. I, I can't sing worth shit, so I really like it. Tell us about that event and then uh, what your legacy truly is. Well, this will be our 27th or 28th year with Boys and Girls Club. My mom started it in 92. and. Um, it's just been going strong. We had our best year last year because of people like Toby Keith and all the great people that have come through there that, that you know, I feel like they're my friends and it, it boosts the town's energy when they all come. But we got Lee Bryce, you know, the boy almost went number one. We got Jake Owen, Jack Diane's moving up on the charts. Toby Keith, okay, yeah, Toby yeah, Keith, legend. legend. I mean, they're all legends, but yeah, all the number ones he's got. Jamie Johnson's coming, Ron White's coming, and then uh, we got the, Unbelievable Jocko every year and his band, you know, awesome. Mr. Lucky. So uh, it, it, it's just a great event. We, I think, I don't know, I got to talk to a lot. It's usually about 106,000 to keep the doors open. But I'm supporting both. I support Russell and Dardanelles. So it's very tough. So you're looking at, you know, 106 to probably 200,000 to keep it open. So, and we just netted over, I think, uh, made over maybe just close to about 187,000 last year. And this year, hopefully it'll be better. Um, some great guys like Jimmy Patterson that um, helped me out. Thirty-five grand here. Well, Warren and I would like to help out this year as well and bring in some sponsors uh, that we have at our marketing company to help out your charity. Uh, we really appreciate what you're doing, especially for the Boys and Girls Club and the charity. Which leads me to that legacy question. When it's all said and done, you've lived an extraordinary life, ups and downs, oh, and yeah. you've been real. You know, you have a, a son that you're raising. You know, what legacy do you want to leave? I don't know. I mean, I'm a wingman for Folds of Honor now. God bless those guys. You know, 90-something percent goes to the children it's getting their scholarships and helping the, you know, the wounded out and, uh, and our soldiers. But um, I'm new at that. I'm just a wingman. I'm trying to get as many celebrities to become Folds of Honor as well. But I don't think legacies are built upon somebody thinking about it. I think that's something for the world or the other people to decide what my legacy is. I just keep doing what I do. and try and enjoy as much as I can and uh, live life, man, because you're only here for a short time. You might as well have a good time. That a boy. Well, it's been an honor. Got it, brother. I love the way you detach from the outcomes and you live your own life. I'm a huge fan and really appreciate your time during the Masters to come out and do Entrepreneur, the playbook. All right. Love it. Thanks, man. You got it. All right.